All right, so we are going to look at a couple of examples of dis distributive property and multiplying polynomials. During our flashback today, we did one similar to this, so we're going to start with the distributive property. And we're going to do an example like this one. It's actually number 12 on the, on the new work that you're going to get. Um, it's 6.5 x squared times 4.1x plus 0.3. That's our first example. 6.5x squared times 4.1x plus 0.3. So just like we did in number two on your flashback this morning, we're going to take that 6.5x squared and we're going to multiply it times both things in the parentheses. So we have, uh, if you like doing it the chart way, you could set it up like this, where you have 6.5x squared here, you have 4.1x here, you have 0.3, you do it that way. Or you can do like what you did in Algebra 1, 6.5x squared times 4.1x plus 6.5x squared times 0.3. You're doing the exact same thing. You're taking this times each one of those, or you have a big string of it. This, I think, kind of forces you to be <coughs> organized to make sure you're doing what you need to do. Kind of gives you some columns, too. Whatever suits your fancy is fine. So somebody with a calculator, what's 6.5 times 4.1? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. So we have 26.65. Now, if you have two x's and another x, how many x's do we have? Yeah. So we would have x to the third plus, now 6.5 times 0.3 gives you? Yeah. And how many x's do we have? Yeah. We have x squared. So the same thing would happen here. If we were to multiply, we'd get 26.65x um, cubed and we would have 19.5x squared. And then you would write your solution. Can you add x cubes and x squares? Mm -hmm. No, they are not like terms. They don't have the same exponent, so you can't add them. So that's just plain old distributive property, but with a little um, added in with our exponent. All right, now we're going to look at how to multiply um, polynomials, and I'm going to start with something that is, uh, a I'm going to start with a binomial. We're actually going to do two examples. Um, so this is multiplying binomials, so it'll be something like 3x plus 1 times x minus 4. Now, depending on where you got your Algebra 1 education, um, it would depend on probably how you learn this. And I'm going to show you three different ways. I'd like you to write the three ways down so you have an example for us to point to and walk you through. Um, and then you can choose what you want to go with. If you learned Algebra 1 here at this school, <coughs> they taught it as just distributing the 3x to both things in the other set of parentheses and the 1. So they did it something like 3x times x minus 4 plus 1 times x minus 4. So you have three, or you have two little distributive property problems. So you have 3x times x minus 3x times 4. <coughs> or you would have 1 times x plus 1 times negative 4. And then you'd clean it up. Is everybody second up to the right? So 3x times x, this is 3x squared, minus 3x times 4, 12x, plus 1x, minus 4. Now, 
at that point, who can you put together? All right, so we have negative 12 x's, and 1 x gives us negative 11 x's. And that's what you end up. So that's if you learned Algebra 1 here at the school. That's probably how you learned it. If you learned Algebra 1 um, <coughs> at a different school, now this you may have learned um, FOILs, and this only works for a binomial times a binomial. So FOIL um, goes something like this. First, outside, inside, flat. Just the way they remember it. So the first terms would be 3x and x. The outsides, this would be an O, this would be an O, because they're on the outside, so that would be 3x and negative 4. The insides would be there, 1 and x. And the last would be 1 times negative 4. Do you notice that you get the same thing? Here was 3x and x, 3x and x. Negative 3x and 4, 3x and negative 4. 1 and x. So you're going to end with the same thing. It's just a little mnemonic device that helps you remember what you're doing. So that may have been if you learned Algebra 1 someplace else because a lot of teachers teach it that way. Now, the way that I want to show you is um, the area way. And I think it, if you are somebody that struggles and you don't know this, the, either one of these two ways, you don't have that down and you're not very efficient at it, then I would encourage you to do it this way. So the, this way is that using that chart method. So we have, we put our, it doesn't matter where you go as long as the parentheses is in, if this is in parentheses together, it's got to be either both here or both there. So I'm going to go with 3x and my 1, and then you have your x and your negative 4. And we're just creating a box. So we, how would you get the answer to this box? It would be 3x times x, right? Which gives you your x, 3x squared. Oops, I totally wrote that wrong. Let's try that again. So we would have our 3x squared. Then what would be this one? 3x times negative 4, which gives you what? Negative 12x. Negative 12x. And what's going to go here? So 1 times x, which gives us 1x. And then here? 1 times negative 4, which gives us negative 4. Write those out and write those bigger. I want everybody to have this example because if you are struggling, <coughs> this is where I'm going to take you because I think it, it cleans up a lot of stuff. Now, who can we put together in these four boxes? Well, you've got your 3x squared. These two things can be added together, negative 11x and your minus 4. So go ahead and write that down. And we're going to do one. This works if you have a trinomial. And I'm going to show you how to do that with a trinomial. And then we're going to stop the notes and we're going to go to board. Uh, but I do want to do one more example with a little bit more of an intense problem than this. It's also great with decimals where you can't just multiply in your head and you don't want to write it all down numerous times. Okay. Here's our last example we're going to do in notes, and we're going to use that box method. So we have 4x squared, or 4x plus 7, and we have 7x squared minus 6x minus 5. So when we make our boxes, 
I'm going to put my 4x and my 7. And then I have 7x squared, negative 6x, negative 5. Now, if you were using this doing the distributive property, you'd have 4x times 7x squared minus 6x minus 5 plus 7 times all of that. Okay, so where is this box coming from? They come together and they meet. So we have 4x <coughs> times 7x squared. These two boxes come together and they meet. So we have 4x times negative 6x. These two boxes come together and we meet. 4x and negative 5. Now, I want you to write that down so you have something to look at. After this, I'm not asking you to have to write this stuff. You can just draw the boxes and put your answers in it because I think you'll be to that point where you can just look at it and know what goes there. But we had 4x times 7x squared comes here. 4x times negative 6 goes there. 4x times negative 5 goes there. Now, what's going to go in this box? Yes, 7 times 7x seven squared. So then what would go here? They come together. 7 times negative 6x. And these two come together. 7 times negative 5. Now, let's go ahead and figure out what each box is. So 4x times 7x squared gives you what? 4 times 7? 28. How many x's? 3. Three. 4 times negative 6? 24. How many x's? 2. Two. This box? Positive or negative? Positive. Negative 20. How many x's? One. What's going to go here? 7 times 7? 48. How many x's? x squared. 7 times negative 6x? 41. Close. 42x. And here? Okay. So now we look at these six boxes. Who can you put together? <coughs> Well, 28x cubed alone, right? There's nothing you can put with this. You put 49x squared. Okay, giving you what, 25x squared. Is that what you said? Okay, and these two can go together, giving you negative 62x minus 35. Now, if you had done it the distributive property way, it would look like this. And then you would have to write it out. What you are going to find is that you have the exact same thing It's just this way with the boxes is more organized. It forces you to not lose something. <coughs> and then you would go from there. <coughs> I like the box method, especially when you get with these big guys. There's one other way. It's vertical. I'm not going to go with that. Uh, right now, I want to get one of these things under control first. 